okay for each is not defined underscore for each that's strange um let's see oh i have missed the dot all right so yeah we have this but obviously we are making a post call but we are not getting any data right so let's now look into that so we have the user controller what we are going to do is we are uh, just a second so what are we getting in response let's quickly see that yeah we are getting the post request right so we are good on that what we have done here is we have imploded the though all those symbols into a comma separated thing so that you know we can send that as an url so we will have url equals um this so this is the url and we have a query string here um which is basically a string uh, let me return and show it to you So you can see <coughs> LNT, ONGC, and sale, all the you know um, different component uh, scripts which were passed as uh, array are now converted into a string. Okay, so let's get rid of the return. I'll go full screen. Okay, URL is there. We will need a client which is going to be a Guzzle client. Guzzle HTTP. Okay and we'll make a request but first let's do a base uri base underscore uri okay and we'll say that this is our url we'll set a timeout which is going to be 2.0 seconds okay so our client is ready and then we will have a response which is going to be oops sorry client request and we'll say that it's a get request okay um then we will get a string okay okay so let me first show you what the string is so that you know you have some idea log info response dot get body hmm. oh sorry it's request so response get body get contents let me see if i have anything in my log no we don't so we have this now let's refresh our page we have a post call and you can see this is the information which we are getting okay so there are three json objects but there is something strange in here there's three characters one two three okay we need to remove that so what i have done is i have taken this entire three thing let's say we put this in a variable which is string equals and then we will substring so we'll remove three characters from the start and then we get a perfect json so dollar stocks is going to be json decode oops not this one uh, json decode dollar string one okay and then we get all the stocks so if we return now we will see where is we are getting this array okay and we need it in a structured format so we'll quickly do that uh what do we have so let's say we have stock data final which is an array and we'll quickly do a for each loop on dollar stocks and what do we need so dollar um stock data final 
dollar stock okay uh, i know the keys so i'm doing that i have a the code for reference so the t is basically the name so i'm keeping you know the name equals the object and that's why if you see here i did a v4 where is it with stock data no not this one right while doing the stock and name i got both although i don't need it but yeah that's how i did it so in here i have the name and then i'll have name in general this will be a key then i'll have price change and change percentage so this is going to be my price change sorry and change percentage okay um so what do we have here stock so the stock t is the name so that's t okay and then we have price price is l i don't know why those cryptic things but anyways then the change is c i could make that out so that's c and the last one will be cp okay so change percentage that's how it is and so now we can return stock final data and i think once we do that yep we have this and we have these three things and obviously it's early morning so we won't get any updates in this but we don't have a interval as of now i have to do a manual you know refresh so that i can uh you know update that but we have this in created right and additionally what we will do is we'll set interval it's a function where we'll have this oops not that one but yeah arrow function this dot get stock prices okay and what i'll say is after every second for now let's test that out every second whether it is making a post call so this is here created yes it is doing a post call so we are fine with that just to make sure that you know the values do change what we will do is um we'll have this as is it now no it's time right resolving reference mm, something happened to php stock okay yes so it will return me the unique timestamp and so you can see every second it is making a call so that's fine we'll undo that and keep it at cp so we are done and typically what we will do is this is one second into 60 seconds into three minutes so that's the frequency which ideally i would like so every three minutes it will do a post call and it will make the changes based on what we get and additionally what i have done is i'll show you add this small little css okay where tr with green and tr with red will have these okay how we are getting it so we are and if you see in this tr i'm doing a vbind class get row stock dot change if the change is more than one more, uh, sorry more than zero it's green otherwise it is red and tr with green the color is green otherwise it is red now if i refresh so yes so as per the last data these two scripts are in green which means they had an increase in their value whereas uh, sale had a decrease in their value so yeah that's how we have used you know the google finance uh api to create our own small little ticker on our dashboard okay and yeah uh, we can do a lot of cool things with it if you like the videos do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel